All right, after we've got our valence electrons counted, our next step is to draw the correct skeletal structure. So we wanna organize our elements um, in the way that they're gonna look like in real life. And so we have to follow a few rules with that. So um, just a couple of the rules. Um, hydrogen is always terminal. And terminal just means that it's on the end. So it's never gonna be in the center of a molecule. It's always gonna be on the ends. Um, another rule is that OH and oxygen uh, bonded to a hydrogen is a very common motif. So if you see you know, an OH in, in a molecular structure, that gives you, you know, a clue that it's there. Um, overall simple molecules, which is what we're gonna focus on, are often symmetric. So basically when we're drawing these molecules, you wanna keep it pretty simple. Don't try to do crazy stuff. Don't you know, be drawing octagons and pentagons. We wanna keep things relatively simple. And then finally, um, the last and probably most important point is that the least EN, capital EN stands for electronegative atom, goes in the center, or at least more in the center. Um, so again, EN stands for electronegative. And electronegativity is a measure of how hard an element, or really a nucleus, pulls on electrons in a bond. So we can think about it as uh, how much that uh, nucleus or that element wants electrons. And so you can look up different tables of electronegativity. Um, I like to use this one. This is just ptable.com. So if you just you know, go to a web browser, type in ptable.com, you've got a periodic table here, and this one's got all kinds of cool facts. Um, over here, you see um, on this top here, electronegativity. So when you hit that button, It'll, um, organ it'll tell you the electronegativity of each atom, um, where the higher the number, the more electronegative. So you can see fluorine, for example, is 3.98, oxygen 3.44, nitrogen 3.4, chlorine 3.16, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and think about the general trend here, right? Another trend. And the general trend is when we go towards the top right, we get more electronegative. Uh, if we think about our elements, we don't really consider the noble gases as part of this um, because they generally don't form bonds, right? So um, they, they're just not considered um, in terms of electronegativity. And you see that with this um, chart as well. You can see most of our noble gases don't have the electronegativities listed. They're, of course, exceptions because it's chemistry. Um, so if you think about the top right, fluorine is going to be our most electronegative atom. Um, and so it follows the same trend that you know we've learned with a lot of other stuff, right? Draw our staircase. Um, let's just take a look at some examples. So let's compare nitrogen and oxygen. So in this case, nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. So if you had a, nit a bunch of nitrogens and some oxygens, the nitrogen would go in the center because the less electronegative one goes in the center. If we compare um, fluorine and chlorine, chlorine is going to be less electronegative than fluorine. Right, so chlorine would go in the center if those were bonding. And then um, same thing with the um, size of an atom. If we're kind of going diagonal, uh, when you go down uh, rows, that has a bigger effect than going towards the left and the right. So for example, with phosphorus and carbon, phosphorus is less electronegative than carbon, right? Which you can see um, on our little chart here. Carbon has electronegative 2.55, phosphorus only 2.19. Cool, so let's see how we're gonna put that in use. Um, so for example, if we have CO2, NH4+, CH3OH, 
and then NO3 minus, right? So let's think about this first one. Um, if we think about carbon and oxygen, carbon is going to be the less electronegative element. And so um, carbon is what's gonna end up in the center. And we wanna keep it pretty simple, keep it symmetrical. So we'll put carbon in the center and one oxygen to either side. If we think about NH4, remember our rule that hydrogen is always terminal. So we'll put the nitrogen in the center and then keep it nice and symmetrical and just draw one hydrogen um, in each, you know, four sides of the nitrogen. If we think about this CH3OH, right, remember we said that this OH is a common motif, and so what we can say there is that this side of the molecule has an OH, right, and you can tell that the formula is trying to give you a hint about that, how it separates that H from the um, other H's to tell you that that O and H go together. And then if we think about carbon, that's a less electronegative than um, the oxygen, and then we can put the H's all around to keep it nice and symmetrical. And then finally, NO3 minus nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. So we want to put nitrogen in the center and then um, put the oxygens around it. Um, you know, the symmetrical thing isn't very exact. Again, this is all practice, practice, practice.